Hey guys, how you doing again? I wanted to thank all my new subscribers. I got at least 10 more subscribers from yesterday and that's driving me to create way more videos for you guys. Um, in between the greenhouse build, I wanted to show you why it's taken me a while. That's not the only thing that I have. I have kids, I have uh, different things we're doing around the farm here, I, I still work. Um, so one of the things we're doing is you've seen in the cutting potatoes video, which got a lot of support. Thank you guys. Love the comments. I replied to everybody. I got the likes. I got the new subscribers. That's great. Um, we're doing th that trailer that I showed in that video. So if you remember, I said I was ordering breaks off Napa. I love our local Napa store. I support them as much as I can, but they just couldn't get it together with the breaks. I would have had to drill out the pads that I had. Uh, replace rivets. It, it just was a mess. There was no direct fitment for my two inch by 12 Dexter brake pads, which is an easy pad to get. So what we ended up doing is getting the number off of our big text trailer. It's on all the backing plates. It's a little white tag. Okay. It should be a series of numbers. We just typed into Google brake pads, big text trailer, Amazon, and the pad number. Amazon had our direct fit pads. They're Dexter pads. They weren't too bad price, you know, normal set of brake pads for the rear axle for that trailer is around 150 bucks. I think we paid 220 with shipping. So not bad for direct fitment, Dexter brand, good quality. I wish these were riveted, not bonded. That's what happened to mine. My pad actually came off. So we're going to replace that rear axle today. So uh, again, thanks for subscribing guys. Hit the bell so you get notifications of any time we have uh, new videos coming up and I'm going to keep trying to do these videos as I get more subscribers. So it's only going to get better. Keep hanging in there with us. Thank you. All right. So <clears throat> I picked a really bad day to do this. We're forecast is supposed to be raining right now. We're going to try to get as much as we can, if not all of it done today. So I don't have to keep wearing different clothes and it looks weird on the video. Not that you should care about my clothes. Okay. So here's our part number that we got for our right side. It even says the right handed. It's at three series number with the dashes on top. That's what they use. So if you have a big text trailer, that's where you can find your part number and you gotta type that into Google. I tinsel, big text, it says 14 GN. When I bought it, I could have got horn swoggled. Uh, he told me it was a 16,000 pound. I don't know. I've hauled a lot of weight on it. It seemed to be holding up pretty good. We are gonna upgrade to a dual tandem. I may do that this year, depending on finances. That coronavirus is kind of hurting a lot of things for me right now. So. Here's our brake pads we got. We're gonna open them up. There we go, there's the part number for our right-handed pads. Uh, let's see here, 12 by twos, left-handed. The number for the left-handed. Guess they're one off here. Complete assembly, all we gotta do is bolt these on. These are easier than the Napa pads too. That's another thing for $50 more or $70 more. It comes with everything, a new backing plate, new magnet, everything. All you got to do is take those five bolts off, pull them back on and hardwire it in. You're done. So we can try to hurry up and get this done. We wanted to kind of paint under this frame a little bit. It's getting a little rusty and crusty. So right here we have our right hand. Take that out. Thing I noticed is they package your packages really well, which is cool. They're just brake pads. I mean, yeah, I think with shipping error is 232 is a grand to it total. Oh, nice. They even give you new bolts. Yeah. So this is what we're getting for $70 more. You get a new pack of bolts. Unit pack. Might be catnip. And that's it. Made in the USA. Right there. Okay. You block the wheels on a truck, block the wheels on a trailer, have it in park or have it in gear if you have a manual, and put your emergency brake on. You don't want to get ran over. Obviously, we cannot chalk that wheel because it's off the air. If it was down on the ground, we would chalk it. I'm going to go get some tools. I'm going to get all my electrical tools first. Then I'm going to get my sockets. I have a lot of American-made sockets, but whenever I was doing a lot of mechanics on uh, 
heavy equipment and triaxles. I bought into Sun X tools. Uh, Sun X tools are like the uh, Chinese snap on, so I don't support China. But if Mac tools are snap on, whatever lower their prices, which I can't see happening, I can afford to buy their tools again. Today, if you want to help, wait, wag your tail if you want to help. All right, try to ignore that sound from the compressor. It's annoying. We only have a small compressor. I got my use out of it. I'm looking for a new one eventually. Uh, so these Sonex tools are great. They're lifetime warranty. Here's the model I got. I don't know if that helps you. I've had these for a number of years now. Uh, but yeah, they're a nice tool. They never break. Okay, we got our wire strippers out. Vice grips, air socket. Yeah, hillbilly uh, socket set here. Hillbilly hand wrench. So this is pretty much what you need for this job, you know? And uh, with these little bit of tools, you could do pretty much anything around a farm, a mechanical shop, uh, if you're a homeowner. These are some good tools to have. You don't need a fancy Intersol ran uh, air gun like that. Although I've gotten my use, that thing's probably 15, 16 years old. Uh, but yeah, so let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is go behind there, cut them uh, brake magnet wires. We'll make sure first ours are long enough. Yeah, they go out the back pretty long from this magnet, so just cut them somewhere back here. All right, you just snip those off like that. Don't lose this in the trailer axle. You're not gonna fish it back through and you'll have to run a whole new line. And give yourself a lot more room than needed. In our case, a 916 is gonna do the job on these. Hard to do with one hand. Right. Ah. Must be like riveted from the back or you ah. take these off. Ah. Should just all come right off like that. That's where you put that. Alright, these studs are a little small, so on the back of your door cranks or ever the setting may be in here, you want to turn it down a little bit. You don't want to break your studs off. That's it, it's literally that easy. We're gonna splice those two wires in the back, put our wheels uh, back on, re-tighten those. Now, I don't like spending a lot of money on something I don't use a lot, but this is the best wire stripper, this style here, that you could possibly imagine. That's how it works. You could set how long. I do, I just left it set from the factory. I've never really fooled with that. Get your wire, I'll show you how this works. This is so nice. Again, it was that easy. We had to actually go back a little further because this is double coated. It's nice that Big Tex does that. Less water, the better. We're gonna use the red wire connectors. Now these are a shrink wire connector. If you don't know a lot about wire connectors, couplers, whatever they're called, you wanna get the ones that'll melt. You melt these onto the wire and then use tape. So it's a double precaution. If you get corrosion in these, your lights go out, your trailer brakes don't work. So these are the ones we use. All right, so all you do is your wire. Get your connector on. Sometimes give it a twist, make sure it bottoms out, hits home. Get these uh, crimpers. You see where that little uh, indentation is? That's where you want to get those. So funny doing this one-handed like this and showing you guys, and this is it, watch, like that. I always go towards the end, do a little bit more. I want to make sure it won't come off. That's it, that's all you have to do to crimp these wires on. I'm gonna do this times four, and we're gonna melt the wire. Show you what that looks like. I got one connected in here. They ain't going nowhere. There is no ground or positive on these. I believe they work, you know, either way.
wire loop they give you back here that you can put your wires in, extra wire. I left that long. You could even stuff some in if you wanted to, but nothing's gonna hit that. Yeah, we didn't replace any of our drums on this trailer. They were all good. So what we did is we cleaned the rust out with some 80 grit sandpaper, clean around it like this. And that's it, they're good to go. I did install on this side these seals. The seals being $40, I think on the next side, I'm gonna try to save. Watch us out. Now I'll show you how to adjust the wheel. Okay, just to show you a better picture of what we're doing, you go in, let me see if I can focus that. Focus, okay. You go in from behind in that little hole with a screwdriver and all you do is you flip this little wheel down and that spreads your pads. And all we're gonna do, I gotta refocus. All we're gonna do is spin that drum until you start hearing them pads hit a little bit and it's adjusted. Now these are self adjusting uh, brake systems Dexter has here. So uh, we really don't have to do that, but it's a good precaution and good habit to get into just to always adjust your brakes. So we just greased our bearings. I'll show you on the other side how we do that. If we have time before the rain hits, but basically packing a bearing, there's a thousand YouTube videos. When your seal gets pushed on, you make sure your back bearing's in, your race and your seal. Put it on like this. Slip it over here. Can't push it on there. Now, I'm gonna bring you over so you can hear that. These things are almost perfectly adjusted for our drum, so. Kind of hand tighten that. We'll go get another socket. We need a bigger socket for that. I just got to let you guys hear this so you know the sound. You hear how it's barely hitting? It's probably even hitting a little much. That's what you want. That's what you're going All for. Right, so when you're tightening your axle nuts, you never tighten these with a air socket. I'd like to tighten this all the way up by hand. Just a couple of threads are hitting. So I have to start it off with a socket. So, okay, here's what you want. That's hand tight. Here's what I do. I put this on. Now you want to go specs from your trailer, but I'll just show you what I do. Just a little more than hand tight and that's it. It's not like it'll burn out your bearings. It'll be too tight. And spin that wheel. You hear that? That's what you want. All right, that's tight. There is a little spring doohickey thing. See that slot in there? It only goes one way to the axle. See how our axle slotted? Let's put that on. Okay, like that. Yeah, this ain't doing, easy doing this stuff one-handed. All right, so ours on a little bit crooked. Get a screwdriver or something, get that on there, make sure these are all tight. It ain't gonna come off. There she is. Okay, all right dirt out from there you don't want no dirt near your bearings it's starting to really rain guys so i don't know how much of the other side i'm going to show you give you a little sneak peek at the end of something i'm working on though something pretty cool all right we'll tap that on with a dead blow hammer these are considered buddy hubs take this out and you can actually grease these axles from here but anytime you're doing a brake job you're better off cleaning all the old grease out re-greasing the axle, uh, greasing it through here too, and packing all the bearings and getting new seals. And that's what you're going for, right there. Get that wheel on. Now again, there's torque specs to all your guys' wheels. You should follow those specs. I prefer my wheels tighter than the stock specs, but so again, this is not me putting my wheel on. But that's how I do it, so that's been working for me trailer sometimes you got to slip them through the other way no matter what you do don't ever put anti-seize on your lug nuts over time they'll actually work the other way and freeze up on you you'll screw up all your uh threads off of it i'm going to turn our air gun back up remember we turned it down for the uh brake job here
All right, we'll lower this side down. I'm gonna turn that compressor off like after I get the other side done and we'll pack some bearings. That way I don't lose my sanity, you don't lose yours. Take our jack out. Make sure your workstation underneath all clear. Make sure no one's under the trailer, especially if you have kids. That's it. There's brake pads 101, it's done. Uh, if you have a big text, that's how we found the number. That's how we put the shoes on. I'm gonna try to see if that other side, we can get some packing in today so I can show you that. All right, so I just wanna show you guys this other side real quick. We're gonna pack the bearings. But this pad isn't really that bad. This is why I don't like bonded pads. That's how, that's how it came off. That's really dangerous. That's why I had no brakes. And I swore that my pads were good. Look look at the heat, what the heat did to it, it cracked it. And I swore whenever the last time before I got it inspected and even mid after inspection till now that I've checked these and they were fine and they must have been. But uh, it's crazy how that can just happen. It's from the heat, you know? All right, here's what I do when I'm changing my pads. You get a clean rag, all this old grease. In our case, brake shoe dust and metal off. We want to make sure our spindles are still good. Make sure they're good. Everything's okay with our threads. All right. Can I get a can of brake clean? Squirt it off. Attention, young kids. Don't clean your hands with this. Don't. Man, that stinks. You have a life of pain like I do with eczema on your hands. Don't do that. Wear gloves when you can. Avoid getting this stuff in your hands with your eyes. We'll apply a thin coat of new uh, grease to the spindle. Some where your seal's going, so your seal will be smooth. All right, I'll show you guys real fast how I pack bearings. Get your hand, pump it full of grease. Get your bearing, put it, put the, or get your grease, put it towards the edge of your hand. Hold your bearing like so. All you gotta do is push it in. All you're doing is smushing it in. Take a little bit off at a time. You don't go just glob it right in. Just put a little on the time. What you're gonna look for is this right here. See that little bit's coming out? That's when you know to turn your bearing like that. Just keep going down the line and stuffing it full. You want to stuff that crack full and just keep pushing it in. See? Turn it again. You just repeat this process until it's all stuffed full of grease, really. That's how you pack a bearing. That's it. Okay, we got the trailer brakes all done. Second thing we're doing today, I don't know if I'm gonna shoot the whole thing or just when I'm done. See how much time I have left. I got this steel box, believe it or not. Look how thick it is, somebody who made this. I got this big steel box because we're gonna mount, mount a winch on the trailer. I got a 14,000 pound winch I wanna mount on there. So got this box for five bucks at Rogers, Ohio on the sale. So me and my dad were there, we picked that up. I'm gonna cut the front out put the rollers on the outside and rollers on the inside. That way the winch will work real smooth. I don't think anybody's gonna be able to steal that winch out of there, so. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're painting the, uh, actually I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna paint these leaf handles for the uh, Mother's Day project. And then I'm going to uh, paint the bottom of this, try to paint this and work on this in the same time. We'll see how that works. 
First thing we're gonna do though is uh, I gotta make a paint mixer. See how good that that's turning out. Leaves a nice coating. This is kind of a pain. It's putting a roadblock up, but I had to grind down these nuts to almost nothing just to get them in, in here where they go in the winch. The smaller side is too loose. It must be something metric. So I'm gonna do that get all these fitted in. Then we're gonna drill holes, four holes, mount it in the box, mount it on the trailer with four screws. Then we're gonna just weld it across the back. All we did here is mark out all our holes on the bottom of the box where that winch is gonna sit. We'll drill our pilot holes first, which is a smaller hole, uh, followed by a bigger hole so it's a little easier on the tips. Then we'll bolt the winch in the box and then we'll start mounting it on the trailer. Winch mounted in. Now what we're gonna do is cut this out for our roller bars. That way the winch cable doesn't get all frayed on the rough edges. That's what those are meant for. Or that's meant for the cable to ride all along those rollers. So we're gonna oversize it, cut it. I am thinking I'm just gonna weld it right to the box. All right, there's the hole. Now we'll just mount the, uh, one of our winch rollers on the front. Weld it right. Don't have to be perfect welds. Those will hold just for a roller. All right, we got our box mounted on. Now, this is what I did. I welded this box all the way across. I ain't done yet keep welding that and then uh the, it's bolted from underneath so nobody can get it out the reason why i did that is because when i go to auctions and things like that people steal a lot it's not good but it happens so i did that that way they'd have to literally cut those welds off i'm gonna bolt this down take those out and get the box off without me seeing them so 
Now, this is going to stink whenever I have to get wood off here, but I'd rather spend 10, 15 bucks in grinding wheels to cut that weld off every time I need to do, you know, replace a deck every 10 years than have, you know, a $500 winch and plus the box stolen every time. So that's where we're at. I'm going to strap down the front so it's on the ground and then I'm going to board. We got the winch all hooked up got a couple bolts in the front welded the back it's pretty solid i mean i cranked it down really good here's the setup we got for right now the only thing we're gonna have to do after we get our tractors we're picking up some classic tractors tomorrow we we'll weld some brackets in here for the battery compartment maybe hook these lines up outside maybe to the truck but yeah so that's what we that's what we did today some of what we did today